Oh, praise the name of the Lord, everybody in this place. We well, thank you especially for joining us today. We are going to have a good time together in the presence of the Lord. Please bring your faith, bring your expectations over to this technology because God is here. No matter where you are watching us from, if you plug in with your faith, plug in with your expectations, to your amazement, you are going to see that God is there with you. So please bring them over, and every joint is going to supply. Hallelujah, glory to God. Welcome to church. This is Church at Hero Smart, and Hero Smart is a ministry set up by God for the discipleship of the nations in keeping with the instruction of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, which says, Go and make disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you to do. And surely I will be with you till the end of the age. And in trying to keep that instruction, this ministry, God's given us the great privilege to create a resource through which we can do that very well. That resource we've titled the Online Discipleship Program, or the ODP in short. And now the ODP is a set of studies from the Word of God, which may be sectioned into five major categories of studies. The pharmacy section of the Word, the milk section of the Word, the meat section of the Word, the water section of the Word, and combination meals. And in coming through the 2022 ODP, we've come through the pharmacy aspect of it. Uh, we are right now in the milk category of the Word. We're going to try and further the milk aspect of the Word of God today with a message that I am going to title, Lean Out of Hands, Part 1. Hallelujah. This is going to be a two-part series, Lean Out of Hands. There is going to be Part 1 and there is going to be Part 2. But we are going to broach the idea of talking about Lean Out of Hands with the first aspect of it today by the grace of God. And of course, the catalog of certain studies that may, may be called the milk of the word can be found in Hebrews chapter 5 and chapter 6, talking about repentance from dead words, faith toward God, instruction about baptisms, the laying out of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So uh, for the sake of time, we are not going to turn over there, but if you have time at your leisure, please go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 5 and chapter 6. You are going to see these teachings that I just quoted right now by the grace of God. So we've come through repentance from dead works, faith toward God, instruction about baptisms, really, really critical and fun studies of the word. And we are going to right now move on to laying out of hands, part one. So when we're talking about laying out of hands, what are we trying to understand? Well, laying hands on people, especially, we see it all through the pages of the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, how God effected a transfer of spiritual energy via laying out of hands. So for non-Christians, you may not be familiar with that. What are you talking about, laying hands? What's the meaning of that? Well, it's a term, it is an avenue through which spiritual energies are transferred to an external agent via physical contact. In other words, you can lay hands on somebody and spiritual energy is going to flow. The power of God literally is going to flow from your hand to that person. And if they are, if they are spiritual and they have faith, they can receive their healing like that. Believe it or not, it is real. And it works. And we, we are partakers of that benefit and that blessing by the grace of God. So it is an avenue through which spiritual energies are transferred to an external agent via physical contact. The physical contact may be initiated by the agent of transfer, or it may be initiated by the recipient of energy. So in other words, somebody trying to transfer positive spiritual energy, or in other words, negative spiritual energy, can initiate that transfer. Can touch that person and can, can touch that person. And in other in other instances, the person on whom energy is to be transferred can initiate the contact as well. But it is important for us to understand that there are different types of energies. And when we're talking about energies, for some of us who are physicists and scientists, you you are going to quickly understand you're talking about something that has the ability to do a certain work. 
So energy in the realm of the natural is going to be the ability to do a particular kind of work. So for example, if you're trying to do mechanical work, you've got to find a way to get mechanical energy. Mechanical work is going to be the work of maybe lifting up this pan with my hands or the work of trying to throw something at you. Well, all those things are actions or works to be done. But before those works are done, you got to have enough energy in your physical body, for example, to hurl this thing at somebody, right? So energy is going to be required to do a certain work. You want to do mechanical work? You require mechanical energy. You want to do electrical work. So, for example, the work we are doing right now, being able to communicate via the internet with this technology, I can't do that work just by trying to throw a pencil at you. Hey, come on. Can you hear me right now? No, I've got to understand how to tap into the work, the energy called electrical energy. How electrical energy is going to be a, a pointing to that computer and connect to that computer before I can do electrical work. Well, the same thing is going to be applicable in the things of the spirit. Every action of God. You want to do the work of healing, for example, in your physical body. You are going to understand how to tap into healing energy. You want to do the work of deliverance for your baby. You are going to understand how to tap into deliverance energy. You want to do the work of uh, breaking down barriers and, and creating miracles in your circumstances. You are going to understand, need to understand how to tap into the requisite amount of spiritual energy. Uh, so that's the reason it's important to understand that things just don't happen. Energies are transferred in the realm of spirit. Uh, but however, there are different two major categories of energies. There are positive spiritual energies and there are negative spiritual energies, unfortunately. Uh, so just like positive spiritual energy can be transferred, well, negative spiritual energies can be transferred as well. And those negative spiritual energies, they have the ability to do negative work or negative works in somebody's life. If somebody contacts the negative spiritual energy of infirmities, for example, those negative energies can enforce the condition of the loss of the flesh in your life, can enforce the condition of the pride of life in your life, can enforce the condition of the loss of the eyes in your life. Really? Yeah. Yes! It is the truth. That's the reason this concept is important. Well, I don't want to contact a negative spiritual energy that's going to be making me feel prideful and lustful. Well, you got to understand how <laughs> the concept of laying hands to start with. And the concept of laying hands actually is a big umbrella because there are other avenues which will produce the same effect as laying hands on people. Oh, wow. There are other avenues through which you can contact spiritual energy, like the avenue of speaking words. Like the avenues of even touching people's clothes and cloths and handkerchiefs. We are going to see all those things. Even the avenue of thinking about somebody. You can transfer spiritual energy, contact spiritual energy, just because you're thinking about somebody. Wow. Where do you see that? Haven't you read in the Bible that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think? So I can tap into the power of God just by thinking about something. And if I can do that, guess what? If I think about something else that is negative, I can tap into negative spiritual energy. Really? Correct. That's the reason the Bible says think about things that are true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, of good report. Next is the praise. Why? Because you can be a partaker of negative spiritual energy through your thought processes. Whoa. All right. So we're going to be talking about all of that right now. So let's break it down real quickly by this graphic on the board with this graphic on the board, so watch with me, and I'm going to share it with you. All right, how many people can see my beautiful mobile board right now? <laughs> okay, can you see this board with me? I believe you can. All right, so these are transfer avenues that I'm trying to draw on the board right now. You are going to see transfer avenues with the ends. You can transfer spiritual energy with your hands. You can transfer spiritual energy with your mouth. The words that you speak, spiritual energy, can come out of there. 
and act I mean, with your thoughts as well. I didn't draw the thoughts over here, so let's draw thoughts over there. <laughs> See how big those thoughts are. With your thoughts, you can transfer spiritual energy as well, and with physical objects, like your cloths, like your handkerchiefs. But the power of God and energy can flow out of these avenues just like that. Yeah, that's correct. And if you were reading a book, my, my wife and I were talking yesterday, so we, sometimes you read a book, you can contact spiritual energy like that. So different avenues through which spiritual energies can be contacted or transferred. However, there are different two major categories of spiritual energy. There's what we call positive spiritual energy and negative spiritual energy. Now, positive spiritual energy will ultimately translate into something good for you will translate into godliness, for example, for you, will translate into healing, will translate into deliverance and prosperity, and all the good things that, you know, you may want to think about, deliverance and blessings. Now, well, there are certain positive spiritual energies that can make that happen. What are the different kinds of positive spiritual energies? Positive spiritual energies that can make that happen will include incense, predominantly, which is zoe spices, Heat it up and convert it into zoe gas for you. We talked about that before. It can include the spices themselves, which are going to be gifts on the inside of a recreated human spirit in terms of ministry gifts or even in terms of the gift of the spirit as well. And they are all ultimately going to translate into blessings for you. All of these are different forms of spiritual energy, which the fundamental particle behind all those energies is zoe water. You may be contacted and transferred via those avenues as well. So take a note of it. Positive spiritual energy will translate into physical blessings for you by the grace of God. Alright. What about negative spiritual energy? Well, negative spiritual energy will ultimately promote the kingdom of the devil in people's lives. It's going to create oppressions in the circumstances, sickness and diseases, poverty, lack of insufficiency, and all the kind of madness that Yahushua paid for on the cross of Calvary. Well, if we do not understand how to avoid negative spiritual energies, we are going to see those oppressions being made manifest in our lives. And those types of negative energies that can make that happen will be equivalent to sin, guilt, Infirmities which are going to be negative inheritances that some people have gotten on themselves because of their previous actions of sins, thought processes, and strongholds, all those things are infirmities, may be contacted via these avenues as well. And the result will be afflictions and potentially even persecutions and temptations and oppressions because of negative spiritual energy. Really? Correct. Do you have scriptures to prove this, Mr. Preacher? Absolutely. I'll give you a ton of scriptures to prove it to you. Hallelujah. Positive spiritual energies, negative spiritual energies. If you like to do some artwork, you can draw it here so it can quickly juggle your memory. So that's the reason we're telling you. If I tell you to stay focused on the ODPM, you know, you make sure you cut out. That's the reason for it. Because you can get contact energy, so you're not going to know what's going on. I was feeling good yesterday. I feel like praising God. But then I went ahead and started talking to this person and started doing this. And now I feel like I'm dry right now. Oh, I don't feel like reading my Bible anymore. Well, you just contact that some negative spiritual energy. Well, you haven't seen it just yet. You have to have enough spiritual intelligence to get back into the past of the spiritual man and give you your balances back right now by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So I understand fundamentally laying out of hands. It's just talking about different transfer avenues with your hands, reading a book, speaking a word, thinking thoughts, uh, touching a cloth, a physical object. These are ways that energies may be transferred or contacted in the realm of the natural. And there are two major categories of energies, positive spiritual energy and negative spiritual energies by the grace of God. We are going to get into the knots and bolts of it right now, looking through the scriptures. Did you get something from it? All right, stay on board. We're not done just yet. And so let's go ahead and talk about a, a couple of scriptures right now to solidify this understanding in our minds by the grace of God. All right, so let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4, for example. You're going to see that, yeah, there is something called energy that can flow out of you. <laughs> or that can flow out of somebody into you if you're not careful. 
First Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 14. Take a look at it. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. We're going to read this one right now. It says, Do not neglect the gift which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Can you see that? So the elders laid hands on Timothy and Paul says over there that certain gifts were deposited on the inside of Timothy just simply because people placed their hands on him. Wow. Is that real correct? What kind of gifts that are being deposited into Timothy because of that? Potentially pastoral because Timothy, Timothy ended up being a pastor. Evangelistic was deposited inside of him. He ended up being an evangelist. The certain spices were deposited on the inside of him. Why? Because of his association with some people. The lit hands on him. Is that still real in the realm of natural right now in the 21st century? Of course. You associate with this ministry. You glean so much from me by the grace of God. You are going to have some teaching spices in you. <laughs> Oh, but I haven't talked to you just yet. You haven't laid. It doesn't matter. You are contacting me via video and audio and MP3s and those articles you're reading. They are avenues if you are going to receive from it. You are going to touch on it. They're going to put certain spices on me, from me, into you just because of that. So bookmark that scripture. That's 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. Let's look at another one. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and in verse 22. Now, this is the flip side of energies right now. So we talked about positive spiritual energy in chapter 4. Now, this one in chapter 5 is going to talk about negative spiritual energy. Now, take a look at it. It says, uh, do not be hasty in the laying on of hands, and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Wow. So not only can I... Contact positive energy. I can contact negative spiritual energy if I'm not careful. Wow. It says, do not be hasty in the laying on of hands. Do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. That's Paul telling Timothy over there. So well, make sure you don't just lay hands on anybody. Because if you lay hands on anybody, you are going to be a partaker of their sins. Wow. What does that mean? Does it mean that Timothy is going to fall into treason? Not necessarily, but the consequences of people's sin, I believe is what Paul is trying to talk about, which is going to be negative spiritual energy, if you want to know the truth about it. So when somebody hasn't repented of their sins, we can read through the ministry of Jesus, Yahushua wouldn't want to pray for them. He wouldn't want to ask, he's going to tell them, repent firstly, let's get right with God, get rid of that sin, then I'm going to transfer spiritual energy to you. How do we know that? We read the story, you're going to read the story later, of a man who was brought paralyzed. They tore open the roof and lowered this man down. And before Jesus had ministered healing to him, he said, your sins are forgiven. Why did he have to do that? He had to get rid of the sin first and before ministry administered healing to him. Oh, but on their other accounts where Jesus didn't say, well, your sins are forgiven, and he just went ahead and he healed them, correct. Oh, why didn't he get rid of sin? Oh, they, were, they had gotten rid of their sins by themselves before they came to Jesus. If they hadn't gotten rid of their sins and they had sins and treasons in their hearts, or maybe they've repented but they didn't know how to receive their forgiveness by faith, Yahushua will have to have helped them get rid of sin before you lay hands on them. Because it was a very smart and studious person. Absolutely intelligent. Well, we learn all these intelligence and all these different nuggets from the ministry of Jesus. Not only Paul. And that's the reason we are going to read right now in Mark chapter 5. Look at Mark chapter 5. You are going to see how smart the master was with regards to spiritual energies and things like that. Mark chapter 5 and in verse 23. Well, let's, let's, let's go over to verse 22. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there and seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come put your hands on her so that she will be healed and leave. 
So this man understood the concept of laying hands. Let's just come transfer something. I know there's something in hands, Master. Oh, please come help me. Medical doctors couldn't help me. Come put your hands. I know there is a resource on you, which is incense. We know that. Come put some incense on my baby. So Yahushua went with it. And a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Not 12 days. 12 years. And she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Yahushua, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought if I just touch his clothes I will be healed immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering and at once Jesus realized that virtue had gone from him spiritual energy this is a very cardinal passage of scripture. If you have a pen or pencil, make sure you online. Verse 30. Yahushua perceived that virtue or spiritual energy, something left his body into her body to cause a healing. In the case of this woman over there, she initiated the contact. In the case of Jairus' daughter, we are going to see later, Yahushua is going to initiate a contact. But it doesn't matter. If there is a physical contact, virtue can flow out if you operate in faith. And that virtue is spiritual energy for your healing. Spiritual energy for your prosperity. Spiritual energy to defeat the oppressions of the devil in your circumstances. Don't you think it's important for we ask ourselves questions right now? It says Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, and he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and you ask, Who touched me? But Yahushua kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Really, really critical lessons we've got to learn from the story, guys. You've got to make sure you slow down right now. Let's think a little bit. Let's press this, let's press this revelation over here. So two things will be responsible for your healing, for your prosperity, for a manifestation of miracles on the outside. Power or virtue or spiritual energy from an agent, a physical agent, who is here in this atmosphere. you got to have somebody walking around in the earth's atmosphere from whom you can contact spiritual energy. There's got to be that vessel here. Oh, but that's Jesus over there. You know, I'm just going, no, no. Yahushua is up there right now. Yahushua's incense that he's generating is not going to be... <laughs> technically able to give you your healing on the side of eternity if there is no physical agent who carries P.I. on his body or her on our body or maybe you are going to be that agent yourself and you're going to find somebody else there's got to be somebody in your world that carries virtue I'm talking about virtue on their body right there's got to be somebody who carries that virtue who understands that virtue? We're going to be talking about how to be a carrier of virtue later. But you've got to understand fundamentally. And, and then secondly, there's got to be faith to tap into that virtue. Just like this woman over there had faith. What's the meaning of that faith? Well, faith is going to be in two categories. There's going to be faith in God and faith in the vessel that carries the virtue. Why? Because Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. It says that believe in the Lord, he will be established, and believe his prophets so he can prosper. What this woman needs over there is prosperity for her physical body because she was dying of that bleeding condition. She believed firstly in the power of God, but that's not sufficient to give her prosperity. She needed to believe that Yahushua, the physical vessel, could give it to her. Write it down. Second Chronicles chapter chapter 20. Let's take a look at it real quickly. Oh, uh, good Lord. God, we've got to talk to this right now because we're going we're to we're move on. 
Second Chronicles chapter 20, I believe, by the grace of God. Let's look at it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. This is the NIV, NIV talking right now. Another, another version of the Bible is going to tell you, you will prosper. No, no, no. You will be established. Have faith in his prophets so you will be successful. Faith in two modes. You got to believe in God fundamentally. That's okay. But you got to believe in somebody so you can tap into virtue. That's how it works. Virtue, faith in God and in the prophet of God sent you. You're going to tap into that virtue. So that's a scripture. Let's look at another one in the Old Testament. See how they transferred spiritual energy. Leviticus chapter 16. Glory to God. God's going to teach us right now. This generation is clueless about spiritual matters. You know, they have faith in their medical doctors and animal prescriptions and medications. But when it comes to virtue, they're just, they're just blank. They don't know what's going on. Uh, Leviticus chapter 16. Let's take a look at it. In verse 21. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Ha! Ah, in verse 20, when Aaron has finished making atonement for the most holy place, the tent of the meeting and the altar, he shall bring forward the live goat. And he is to lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and the rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goats away into the desert in the care of a man appointed for the task. The goats will carry on itself all their sins to a solitary place, and the man shall release it in the desert. Can you see that? They're putting sins on that goat by just laying hands on the goats. Well, we confess our rebellion on this goat. We confess our iniquity. The pride of life, the lust of the flesh, murder, uh, fornication, adultery. They put it on that goat and send the goat away. Oh, how oh, about there's not a physical going? No, no, no. There's a ton of spiritual things going on just by laying hands, being laid in. Wow. Did that happen? Yes, he happened in the Old Testament. And for your information, that's what happened to Yahushua as well. Oh, we laid hands on Yahushua. Well, Caiaphas laid hands on Jesus. Haven't you read in the book of John? Um, I believe it was, uh, let's see right now. Uh, is it John? Somewhere in the book of John. You are going to see how Caiaphas transferred the, the sins of the nation of Israel on Jesus. How do we know that? Well, he said, isn't it better for you that one man die for the sins of the nation than for the whole nation to perish? And the Bible says that he, he said this. Not of his own accord, but has the high priest of that year who prophesied on Jesus that he was going to be the lamb to carry away the sins of the world. Uh, let me see if I can get that scripture right in here quick by the grace of God. See, John 11. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Ah, I got it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Mm -mm. John chapter 11 and from verse 47. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? They asked. Here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. Then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one, might, one man die for the people than for the whole nation to perish. He did not say this on his own accord, but as the high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus will die for the Jewish, na Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Now, we just read Leviticus chapter 16. Isn't that exactly what happened over there with Caiaphas talking to Jesus as well? Can you see that? 
the sins and iniquities of humanity transferred by the high priest when he spoke those words over Yahushua. And guess what? Yahushua received it by faith because he really wanted to do it. Since it's real, you can contact spiritual energy and transfer spiritual energy, possibly rename it spiritual energy by learning from the stories by the grace of God. All right. Now, so these spiritual energies can be transferred, and of course, they include things like incense in the positive spectrum of things, things like spices, evangelistic, pastoral, teaching, apostolic, prophetic, as seeds on the inside of you, which can grow, but excluding the anointing upon. The anointing upon is not going to be transferable simply by laying out of hands. Why? Because it is an inheritance or a reward for passing the Father's fire tests. It is a reward that you get when you imitate the lifestyle of the truly greater who is following after, after, after God or after Yahushua. How do we know that? Well, we know that from the story of Elijah and Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 2. If you get a chance, you can read that story a little bit later. So what happened was Elisha wanted to, to get a, a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Elisha had already been anointed uh, in 1 Kings when God told Elisha, Elijah that uh, he, wanted, he, he retired Elijah. Because Elijah came to God and says, God, I'm tired of serving you right now. I'm just exhausted. I, I want to come home. Because uh, Jezebel sent a word. He says, I'm going to get you, Elijah. And Elijah was exhausted. Uh, he ran out of town like a little baby and started whipping like a puppet. And, <laughs> and the father caught him over. He says, what are you doing, man? What's your problem? He says, yeah, I'm the only one left in here. Look at what I've done for you. I took the hand, 450 prophets of Baal, and, and Jezebel is trying to get me. He says, God said, hey, relax, boy. What's your problem? And give him food. Made him sleep a little bit. He slept off. He woke up. The father thought, well, maybe that's going to be okay. Come on, go back in that city. And you, and you caught that Jezebel. You, you padlock, padlock her mouth, right? You go deal with it. Oh, no, I don't want to do that anymore. No, Lord, I want to get out of here. And I'm come on, what's your problem? Well, God said, okay, if you want, want to come home, I'm going to oblige you because you've been real faithful. There is no treason in your heart from the age of accountability, no problem. But go ahead and anoint Elisha. Go anoint Jacob. Go anoint Azeel. And he went ahead and he anointed those guys. And those guys received their anointings as a consequence of the reward for living consistently in obedience to God. That's where you're going to get the anointing upon. But Elisha wasn't satisfied. He came to Elijah and said, no, no, I got just a little anointing right now, but I want a double portion anointing. And Elijah told Elisha that the way you are going to get that is if you see me go out when I'm taken out of here. <laughs> so Elisha said, well, you and me, as surely as the Lord lives, I'm not going to leave you. When Elijah starts a journey outside the city, 2 Kings chapter 2 is going to tell you that story. He started moving from Gilgal to Bethel and from Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. And if you remember the story of the nation of Israel when they were capturing the, the, the city, the promised land, they went from Jordan during the time of Joshua, if you remember that story, they went from Jordan to Jericho, from Jericho to Bethel, and from Bethel to Gilgal. They started possessing all the land over there. But Elisha didn't take that journey from outside the city into the city because it was born the promised land. What's the significance of that story? Well, the, the significance of that story is these trips from Gilgal to Bethel and to Jericho and across the Jordan represent places of intense spiritual warfare, especially from Joshua chapter 1 to chapter 10. They depict what happened over there. And Elijah was born to the promised land, figuratively. He was born across and beyond, beyond Gilgal. He didn't know anything like fighting and all of that. Well, these trips will give him that experience. Come out of your comfort zone. Get across the Jordan so you can get increased anointings on you. They symbolize periods of intense spiritual battles which Elisha had to go through before being rewarded with the double portion of anointing that was looking for him. 
Elisha was born in the promised land, so he had no experience of war. Why is that understanding important? Well, that understanding is important so you can understand how to be an agent, a carrier of virtue on you. Because the amount of power on you needs to grow so you can generate significant virtue. We call that virtue incense and place it on your body so that anybody who touches your body, anybody who believes in your ministry, anybody who's going to pull from you, virtue can flow from you to them just like that. And understand how to replenish that virtue. Well, first you understand when virtue has left you. Because it's a finite resource. But the anointing on you is going to be required to put virtue on you when you pray. We talked about all the details of that uh, before, especially in baptism to the Father's fire. Virtue is going to be equivalent to incense. The way you generate incense is through prayers. When, when you pray, incense is going to rise. We know that from Revelation chapter 5 and Revelation chapter, chapter 8. But incense will only rise if you are anointed. If you do not have an anointing on you, you are going to pray and there's not going to be incense rising. Why? Because the effectual, firm, and pray over righteous man is going to make incense, a significant virtue of power available. That righteous man over there is symbolic of somebody who carries God's approval or anointing. And the way you carry God's approval is to go from Gilgal to Bethel, from Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. Did you get it? <laughs> Glory to God. Lay it of hands. So we see all these scriptures to institutionalize the concept of laying hands in this ministry, understanding how to transfer energy, how to receive energy, how to become an agent of spiritual energy, positive spiritual energy, and how to avoid, limit, quickly neutralize negative spiritual energies if you were to contact them. And don't let them push you down into treason by the grace of God. Let's look at a few more examples over there. We're going to talk about Yahushua and the woman with the issue of blood. We talked about that in Mark chapter 5 and Luke chapter 8 as well. What about Jesus and the leper? Let's look at it. Jesus and the leper in Matthew chapter 8. Glory to God. These are examples that should get this generation thinking. I mean, can you guys see this over there? That there's something over here we got to think. Huh? Am I the only one doing this, guys? Can, can you see over there? We gotta think, guys. Come on now. This this is gonna be better than medical science. We gotta think on how to tap into this kind of virtues, guys. Come on and start thinking now. Come on now. Matthew chapter eight and verse three. It says in verse one it says when he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him, and a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing. You can make me clean. So Yahushua reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. What happened? Virtue or incense left Yahushua's body to effect that healing, to do the work of healing that man of his leprosy. It cast out leprosy for him because spiritual land you float over there. Glory to God. So that's a story. You don't forget that. Elijah and the widow's son. Let's look at that. In 1 Kings chapter 17, how Elijah is going to place his whole body on that boy and spiritual energy is going to fall from Elijah's body and cast out demons. What plot could have stayed? Look at 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 20. In verse 19, I'm going to back up to that. So Elijah had been staying with this woman. The woman had been nice to him. But all of a sudden, the devil killed her son. So she was distressed. She came crying out to Elijah. Hey, man of God, why have you come right now to remind me of my sins? So verse 19 of 1 Kings chapter 17. Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms and carried him up to the upper room where he was staying. Laid him, on, laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, have you brought tragedy also on this widow I am staying with, my cousin or son, to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times, cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. Then the Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from his room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. 
spiritual intelligence from people who lived on this planet just like you and me are living on this planet right now. I didn't know all this. It is possible to learn that. And some of us, by the grace of God, we're doing something like this already. Yeah, about the grace of God. My baby falls sick or something like that. Now, my first protocol is not going to call 911, call medical science. I'm going to talk to God first. God, what can I do? If God says you, well, emergency, go to medical science, there's blood and all that. Go, you can go over there, but predominantly talk to God. God says, no, we can get rid of this. There's enough virtue in your body. You pick that baby up, you carry that baby. You start praying, oh, come on. Virtue's going to flow from your body. Come on, your baby's going to come out and say, come on, I'm, I'm healed right now. Real stuff, come on. How she packed that be for a Anchorchips as well. Can flow, virtue can flow from clots and handkerchiefs. Let's look at that story. Acts chapter 19. <laughs> Acts chapter 19 and in verse 11. Take a look at it now, somebody. Acts 19 and 11. This is the story of Paul. Our handkerchiefs were taken from his body, and virtue, spiritual energy, flowed to effect the work of healing in people's bodies. Look at Acts chapter 19 and in verse 11. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and evil spirit left them. Evil spirit will even depart when they see incense. Can you imagine that? Through the greatness of God's power, all of God's enemies will bow their knees, including evil spirits. Incense will cast the devil out away from you. God makes you understand that. So they're going to take handkerchiefs and Paul's going to place his hand on this cloth. They're going to take him over to the sick bed. Say, so I'm place this cloth in you. All of a sudden, demons are going to disappear. Well, we can see incense. They're going to disappear. Spiritual energy, real stuff. Wouldn't you like, like to know <laughs> how to tap into it? Study on with us. Why? Why do we need to understand how to transfer spiritual energy to, to other parties? Well, some people haven't learned how to transfer the power of God unto their own bodies by faith. So they need help from others who have learned how to do that. If you know how to do that, you can lay hands on your body by yourself. You don't need to call anybody to lay hands on you. And if you have enough virtue on your body, you can do that. If you do not have enough virtue in your body, there is no pride. You can, you're can. welcome to call somebody. Say, hey, I need a little supply of incense over there. Come on, call me. You go, I've done it for a, a lot of you uh, times. It's not a problem. We're going to generate that incense. Oh, boy, you can't touch my body because you're about 5,000 miles away. It doesn't matter. I'm going to pray with you over the phone. I'm going to do something. Even when I'm, I may not be with you, I'm praying with you. I'm doing sending instances. It doesn't matter. We can do it. Well, so, but predominantly the reason God initiated or created this concept is so that we are different levels of spiritual growth and maturity. And there are times where there may not be enough incense in your body. Call somebody. Let them lay hands on you. Make sure you are in faith. We are going to see over there. Make sure you believe in God and believe in, in the people that you're calling over there. At the back of your heart, you're not going to be telling, telling yourself, oh, what does he think he is? I don't like the shape of his nose over there. Look at it, look at it. He's just talking like he fell from the planet. I don't even like his accent. Oh, but well, come lay hands on him. No virtues, no going to flow. <laughs> if you have animosity at the back of your heart, Toward a certain agent of healing, no, go find somebody else that you can believe in. Because virtue is not going to flow from the person that you're trying to fight with. Trying to contend. How do we know that? Yahushua is hometown. Yahushua was a Lord out of the Holy Spirit and with power, who supposedly should have done good, a lot of good, in his hometown, but he couldn't. Why? Because of people's unbelief. He laid hands on them and nothing flowed. Go read it again in Mark chapter 6. So it's important to be in faith, to have faith in the vessel that you believe carries anointing on him, and then virtues go flow to you. So some people do not know how to transfer power directly by themselves so they can reach out to others, and others can do that by, by the grace of God in faith. They need some mnemonics to stimulate their faith because they could have received energy just by the spoken word. How do we know that? John chapter 4 and in verse 50. 
How Yahushua said, well, I don't need to come to your house, man. I, mean, I got to do something else right now. Just believe my word and your child is going to be healed. Look at John chapter 4 and in verse 50. The royal official said, hold on, let's back up a little bit. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Verse 46. Once more he visited Canaan in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this, this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will not believe. The royal official said, sir, please come down before my child dies. And Jesus replied, you may go. Your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on his way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. And when he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said, the fever left him yesterday at about the seventh hour. Why? Virtue can flow into simply speaking words. Hallelujah. The guy's faith was, hey, I'm going to come, come and touch me, come touch me. And some people are going to be like that. Well, until I get to it. No, they can speak words over you. If they can't touch you right now, just believe those words. And believe the prophet of God. Believe in that operation. You're going to see, oh man, there's some, some cold chills coming down my spot. Literally, I'm talking about something now. Powers go forth from there. Glory to God. Faith in God, faith in the prophet of God. All right. So that's the reason we, we, we do that. The resource on you grows when you give it and you don't waste it. You don't want to waste spiritual energy. We're going to talk about the concept of spiritual economics next week. And that's the reason we talked about a few weeks ago that you want to make sure that you give incense to people who are going to return all the glory to God. Give incense to promote righteousness in the planet. Because if your incense is not promoting righteousness in the planet, it's not going to result in righteousness quotient, which is going to grow the anointing on you, and that incense will have been wasted in that category. How do we know that? We know that from John chapter 6, John chapter 7, how Jesus refused to disperse incense to the crowd who were fed, thousands of people who had been fed earlier by incense, because they would not want to uh, learn the ways of Yahushua. So Jesus feeds them, and then because, you know, they sound like they were going to be interested in righteousness. But then the next day they came around and started asking Jesus, come give us, uh, multiply those loaves. Come on, and Jesus, you know what you did? Uh, just give, give me a bunch of loaves. I'm going to go ahead and go sell it, make money. We're going to do the riches of the community. Come on. And Yahushua told them, no, I'm not going to do that anymore right now because you guys are looking for me, not because you're interested in learning my ways. No, I'm not doing that for you. You are laboring for physical bread, which is going to perish. But what I'm going to give you right now is my lifestyle. And my lifestyle is going to give you that bread. So I am the bread of life. Take my lifestyle if you want to, want to get access to incense going forward. Why would Jesus say that? He's doing, trying to do it because he's trying to conserve incense. He doesn't want to disperse incense to people who are not going to be interested in righteousness. Because in that mode, your RQ is going to diminish. The amount of you is going to diminish. Why? Because you wasted it. So it's important. And that's, that knowledge is going to be important, especially from the perspective of the people who want to be carriers of virtue of them. And all of you coming through the ODP, you are not just like the leper. You are not like Jairus. You are not like blind Bartimaeus. You are like Jesus right now. Jesus is moving through your community. You are carriers of virtue. Why? Because Yahushua says, this signs, these signs shall follow those who believe. They will lay their hands on the sick. You, I'm talking about you now, becoming like Jesus. You can lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So you should step up right now in your operation. Not just to be a recipient of virtue, but to be a transfer agent of virtue. And that understanding of how to grow the anointed on you, grow the righteousness quotient on you, so that the virtue on you can grow, so that you can disperse virtue for righteousness, you've got to have that understanding, master it, and learn how to do that. All right, so how do we tap into virtue? 
And I've been talking about the how of it left, right, and center all through this sermon already. But let's just break it down to a logical sequence right now. From the perspective of the person on whom hands are laid, you got to learn from positive examples in the Bible, especially from the ministry of Jesus. All the examples we've read right now. Uh, the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus and the leper. Learn from those examples. What are we going to learn from those examples? Tap into virtue or incense through faith in God and in the vessel which carries incense or not in the pond. Believe in God to be established and believe his prophets who are going to be the true and greater so that you can prosper, be healed, receive spiritual healing or the blessings of the Lord in your life. We read that scripture before in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20. You got to make sure you identify somebody that carries virtue on him or her. The woman with the issue of blood, her story is very, very classical. You got to think about that story deeply. She went ahead and said, well, I know who I'm going to touch. I am going to touch the person called Yahushua. And she pressed through the, the crowd. She, she pushed and shoved. She pushed. Until she touched Jesus. And she had to touch many people before she did that. She touched Peter, James, and John potentially. Nothing flowed from those guys because they didn't have any virtue on them. <laughs> well, maybe they had virtues on them because Jesus actually transferred virtue on them as well. It says he laid hands on them and he gave a forward into the 72 said go do some things but she didn't have faith in Peter at that time so she couldn't be a partaker of Peter's virtue because she didn't have faith in Peter her faith was in Yahushua and she reached out and she touched Yahushua and that's how virtue flowed you gotta learn from that you want to be a partaker of the, of the virtue in somebody have faith in that vessel have faith in the promise of the Word of God as well, which are going to be instructions concerning physical actions, corresponding physical actions that God's given you. Uh, in John chapter 4 and in verse 46 to verse 50, talking about how Jesus is going to speak just one word to the official and his son lived because of that. Let your thoughts be consistent with your words of faith. Be single-minded. With regards to the promise of the word that you are standing on. In other words, the word of God says that um, the person who is double-minded is going to be unstable and cannot receive any, anything from the Lord. So look at this woman that we just uh, read a few moments ago. The, the woman with the issue of blood. She was very single-minded. Very focused on Jesus. Nothing distracted her away from the master. Says, well, if I can just talk. If I can just touch the hem of this garment, I am going to receive my healing. Why is that important? Well, the reason that's important is going to be James chapter 1. Turn to James chapter 1 right now in verse 6. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's important to be single-minded right now. So one of the reasons why, oh, they laid hands on me and I to receive my healing, maybe because you were not single-minded. You had double minds. You had doubts in your mind. Normally, you got to get rid of all of that. Let's take a look at the scripture. James chapter 1. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in verse uh, 4. Let's start from verse 4. It says, Perseverance must finish its work so you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he shall ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord, because he is double-minded and unstable in all he does. Now, in context, this passage of scripture was talking about asking God for wisdom. So to receive wisdom, you've got to have faith. But you can't, you can't extrapolate this understanding because the Bible says he is double-minded and will not receive anything from the Lord. So if I want to receive healing from the Lord, I'm going to receive my healing from the Lord just like I receive wisdom over here. Anything works like this. you got to be single-minded. No double-mindedness. Single-minded so you can receive when hands are laid on you. Hallelujah. Oh. But I'm trying to be single-minded, but 
doubts and I'm just going to leave my mind. Well, I, I believe God's going to heal me, but, you know, I got that little thing over here saying, no, God's not going to heal you. Oh, but I believe God's going to deliver me, but I got that little thing over here saying, God's not going to deliver me. Well, we can get rid of that doubt. Well, the way to get rid of that doubt is going to be Philippians chapter 4. You need, the first thing you should be asking God before you ask for virtue to heal your, heal your body, or do circumstances and arrange circumstances to eliminate doubt. And the way to eliminate doubt is going to be Philippians chapter 4. Let's take a look at it. Ah, uh, glory to God. You need peace which passes understanding to police your heart. So the reason there is so much doubt and turmoil in your mind, <laughs> double-mindedness or triple-mindedness or quadruple-mindedness. Some people have multiple thoughts in the back of their heart. And do this, blah, blah, blah. And it happens to all of us. Well, what I need to do right now is to do Philippians 4, 68. Take a look at it. It says, do not be anxious or double-minded about anything, but in everything by prayers, supplications with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. When there is peace over there, you can stay single-minded. But peace is a derivative of incense which is going to be generated when you pray to understand the counsel of the Father for your story. So we have lots of situations going on in our lives and there's, well, this just tore them all in my mind. I don't know what to do right now. Can you just slow down a little bit? Let's go talk to God and download, inquire of the Lord. That's what they used to call it back in the Old Testament. So this woman, the issue of blood, she inquired of the Lord the ways you are going to get your healing. God told her. She'd be crying out to God. God, please help me. All right. So God told her the way you're going to get your healing is to make sure you touch Yahushua's body. And that word that she got from the mercy seat because she'd be crying out to the Lord, give her peace and focus. Hallelujah. So if you have double-mindedness, the reason is you haven't inquired of the Lord enough concerning your story to get one word that you can act on, some actionable instruction. And when you get that word, it's going to police your heart. It's going to cast double-mindedness away from you. So that's how to get rid of double-mindedness. But if you've got rid of double-mindedness right now, you're acting based on the instruction that God's given you. You want to touch your Jesus. You want to touch your prophet. You want to contact spiritual energy. Be a single minded and go touch in faith. Virtue is going to flow and heal your body. Virtue is going to flow and rearrange circumstances. Do not tolerate any suggestion that is contrary going forward. Reply back with the promise of the word and do not imagine an alternative thought. Vehemently oppose a contrary thought of doubt because it is faith in the reverse. It's trying to steal your blessing and trying to block virtue. Hallelujah. So that's how to receive virtue on you. I talked about the how part of it from the perspective of the person on one hand to it. Now, that's not the end of the story because we don't want just to be like, well, blind broad males every time. We want to be like Yahushua walking down the street. Of Jerusalem, walking down the street of any city, you come on. You are the Yahushua to your family. You should carry virtue on you. You should understand how to carry virtue. So how do we do it? So from that perspective, the person who's going to be laying hands on people, you're going to understand the difference between the various modes of Zoe, including the anointing within, the anointing upon, Zoe spices, and all those things we talked about before. Please and please make sure you have a firm understanding. Next week, we are going to talk about spiritual economics. We are, we are going to for the break it down. But you got to know those things like your ABCs. Hallelujah. That's how Yahushua was. He was very, very intelligent with regards to spiritual resources. I don't know how many, how many people were in the crowd that touched his body. But when Virgil left his body, he felt it. When last did you feel that incense left your body? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Well, then you study. You ask questions. And until you get a firm answer that can, that can teach you something, you don't stop asking questions. You go to Jesus. You keep asking. You let the Holy Spirit teach you something. I'm asking the same kind of question. The little I know about it, I'm going to tell you. 
How do you know that? Well, we're going to talk about that in detail next week, but you've got to be interested in learning things, things like this. Why? Because we live in a generation, in a season that we call civil war, and there are going to be numerous challenges that will defy natural solutions. And you've got to learn how to tap into supernatural solutions so that you can leave. And survive these challenges that the planet is going to be pelted with. Oh, that this guys they haven't seen anything just yet. If you know the history of the God you serve, when he when he gets ready to judge a generation, he starts small. Then he's going to give them a little a little respite. He's going to say maybe they're going to change. If they don't change, it's going to tighten and loose on them, the escalates, the afflictions, and the plagues. And then it's going to give them a little respite to see if they're going to change. If they don't change, it's going to tighten and loose. That's what this generation is getting ready and pelted with. He's saying COVID with the expectation that people are going to change their ways and start chasing after him. Well, their hearts is going to harden. No, we're going to believe that vaccine, that vaccine is going to. All right, now what you believe you go bring something else. Oh, now you're just just a prophet of doom now. What you talk like that? Now I didn't talk like that. The one you called Jesus said that to you. Go read Matthew chapter twenty four. Read Revelation chapter six. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about: plagues and pestilences, and your medical science and natural science will not save you. What will save you is things like this. You gotta learn how to tap into supernatural powers so you can keep yourself safe, the members of your family and friends and families all around you. You gotta be an agent of virtue right now, God. Generations are going to defy the odds of the natural. You gotta learn how to tap into supernatural power, how to become that agent of virtue on you. So understand firmly. All the different modes of Zoe and Narden upon and Narden within and insist to understand all those things really clearly, like your ABCs. The anointing within will give you life, light, and spiritual energy to please God, to walk worthy of the Lord, so you can sustain the status of PO to the truth of divine love. Anointing upon is obtained as a consequence of passing the false fire tests. And sustain the status of perfect obedience during temptations, persecutions, and afflictions. This is required to push out greater amounts of personal incense during prayers. Personal incense is placed on the physical body and may be transferred to an external agent to complement the efforts of others. The anointing upon is an inheritance. The story of the ten virgins is really important over there. So it's important for you not just to have oil in your lamp, but you're going to have oil in your vessel. Why? Because oil in your vessel is going to complement the oil in your lamp. How do you know that? The anointing upon, as it grows on you, is going to complement your incense. We don't have the time and the luxury right now of spending five hours before you can generate a single ounce of incense. No. In 30 seconds, you generate an incense. You didn't cast that devil out of your baby in the name of Jesus. But the way that's going to happen is if the anointing upon is going on you, or in other words, if you have oil in your vessel to complement the effort of the oil in your lamps. Hallelujah, glory to God. The more you hate evil, the more incense you can download to your body because your RQ is growing. And when you give incense, your RQ further grows so that even though incense de decreases momentarily, greater amounts of incense will be generated when you pray. Quickly return on the glory to God when you transfer incense to others and force and sustain the condition of perfect obedience through a complete exercise of faith principles. The anointing on you is designed primarily to move your body in the direction of immortality in preparation for the next resurrection of the dead. And secondarily, it is designed to help you to generate significant personal incense, which you can transfer through laying out of hands to destroy the works of the devil and create miracles in the realm of natural. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. When laying hands on people yourself, let your thoughts be consistent with your words of faith, 
Be single-minded with regards to the promise of God. And do not tolerate contrary suggestions. Do not imagine an alternative thought. Vehemently oppose doubt because of his faith in the reverse. And do not be hasty in lean hands. Use part use to detect if the recipient is in faith without a single trace of doubt. Wrong beliefs, traditions before laying hands on them. And you should be aware of potential blockers like insufficient incense, the presence of treason. The Word of God says in Psalm 66, if I regard iniquity in my heart, Lord, it's not hear That's the reason you got to use part use to detect, well, hey, it seems like there's something wrong over here. Oh, come pray for me. Come, no, 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 no. God's telling you to do this. You don't want to do it. No, I can't pray for you right now. No, I cannot. If I pray for you, I'll be opposing God and I'll be a partaker of your afflictions over there. No, I'm not going to pray for you. No, you got to repent of that. Oh, really? Yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay, we'll get rid of it. Father, I confess this is a sin right now. Repent of it. In the name of Jesus, please forgive me of my sins right now. In the name of Yahushua, I receive forgiveness. Okay, come on now, somebody. We submit it to God. We're going to resist that devil and charge against to Cast him out of your body. Say, leap right now. Virtue is going to flow. Because you got to understand the virtue that you carry on you is not your resource. It is the Father's resource. And you got to use the Father's resource for official duties. Not for personal duties. Right? So that's the reason you want to make sure you do all those things very well over there. You talk to God. You use potholes. It's their treason over there. Okay, son, your sins are forgiven. Let's get rid of that sin. I'm going to lay him. Well, there's no treason over there. Oh, Satan is just trying to blindfold them. Oh, come on. Satan, I cast you out. You die. Get out of here. In the name of Jesus, push something out. There may be oppositions in the evidence. Read the story of Daniel. How there was a prince of Persia who withheld the angel sends to bring Daniel's answer. And in that case, you don't give up generated incense. You keep pumping up incense and pumping up incense because incense is going to ultimately fuel the angelic on your behalf. And more reinforcement is going to be given to your angels to bring that answer. So don't give up. There may be opposition to heavens. How do I know there's opposition in the heavens? Well, there may be opposition in the heavens. If you check and there's no treason in your heart, there are no treasons around you. You got rid of all of that. But still, the situation hasn't changed. It means there's opposition. But how do I know there's opposition? Well, the affliction was not escalate. If there is still sin over there, you are going to see an escalation of afflictions. It means there's something I need to get rid of. But if the affliction is not escalating, rather if it is de-escalating, it means it's just opposition in the heavens. You stay in the mode of praying and generating spiritual energy, asking God for insight. You're going to see it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. Just like our sister said last week, it said the mountain is going to move. He's moving slowly. You may not see well, he hasn't fallen to the heart of the sea, but he's moving. He's moving slowly. Come on. You keep pushing out something, it will happen by the grace of God. Eliminate double-minded mess. Operating Philippians 4, 6 to 8. That we've read over there. And your miracle is going to happen by the grace of God. Spiritual energy from laying out of hands. Part 1. It is real. Hallelujah. Did you get something from it? Saints to God. This is laying out of hands. Part 1. Next week we're going to talk about spiritual economics. And there's going to be a lot of fun with that. So please, please make sure you get ready for it. <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be great. Hallelujah. All right, as my customers, I would like to give the viewing audience an opportunity to, to connect with the Lord. Some of our friends may not have uh, heard the gospel message before they don't know the Lord. I'm going to ask you, please turn over to Matthew chapter 7, if you have a copy of the Bible in your hands. If not, just listen to me. I am going to read to you the most complete salvation scripture that I can find in my Bible. And this is going to be Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21, which tells us holistically what it takes to make it over to heaven. There is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shine. My brother, my sister, heaven is your story. Listen to me. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, 
And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. And I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Now this passage of scripture lets us know what it takes to make over to heaven, calling Yahushua, Lord of Jesus, Lord of Jesus. Whatever name is convenient for your culture, God's name, really patient and kind and gracious with us. He says, well, that's okay. So long as the back of your mind, you connect it up to the Messiah who died for you. You call Yahushua, Lord, and then you live to please the Father. You make a quality decision right now and start living to please the Father. You are on your way to heaven. And I will lead you in this prayer. Will you pray this prayer with me so that you can gain heaven on your way to heaven and live in the chaos of hell? Pray this prayer with me and we'll take care of that business together. Hallelujah. Say, Yahushua, I realize that I've been a sinner living by my wits and powers calling myself my Lord. I repent of that sin right now. And I call you Lord. Master, boss, and Savior. Please save me from my sins. I believe that you died and you were resurrected from the dead to save me from my sins. Please give me a new heart to live to please the Father. And I thank you for giving me a new heart to please the Father. I am born again with your grace, with your mercy. I will live to please the Father and make heaven my home. Thank you for saving me in the name of Yahushua. Amen. Amen. And amen. Glory, glory, glory be to the name of Jesus. If you pray that prayer with me with all your heart, congratulations to you. You are born again. If any man is in Christ and a woman is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. That old, dirty, nasty heart that you have before you can cast out of you right now while you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Congratulations. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, please go ahead and do me a favor to send me an email at inquiry at heroesmart.com because I'm going to share some resources with you free of charge. I'm not going to charge you anything for it. This free of charge, I'm going to send it to you free of charge. Why? So you can learn all these things we're talking about. Come on board with the rest of us. We're not any better than you. We just start a little bit earlier than you. Why not take advantage of all the resources of God right now? I'm going to give it to you free of charge. Send me that email. Inquiry at Hebrews.com and we will be happy to share those resources with you. Once again, brothers and sisters in the Lord, welcome to God's family. Congratulations to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, for the rest of our families and friends, we may want to take a copy of the study notes on the board. I am going to step away from the screen for just a little bit right now to give you plenty of time to pause your device, take a quick snapshot of the study notes on the board, and I'll be back right after 10 seconds. Other way to go. If you got a chance to take a copy of the study notes on the board, I want to thank you for staying on the board. This is Laying Out of Hands, Part 1, Week Number 22, Here is my Online Discipleship Program 2022. We are just getting started. We are not done with it, so please and please come back next week for more fun study of the Word. Until that, until next time, remember God cares about you and so do you. He is Lord. Stay blessed.